I feel like today I have a important message. It's very different than anything I've ever done and somewhat different than anything I've ever seen that I want to share. Um, topic today, we're continuing the series on sons and daughters uh, and looking really at God the Father. Uh, last year, I think we looked at the Holy Spirit for some months. We looked at Jesus. This time, we're looking at God the Father and what he means. And so my topic is receiving the Father's blessing. And like I said, this is different than anything I've ever done because I think I have about 100 scriptures. Fortunately, the slide operator doesn't have to keep up with me. Um, <clears throat> I literally, uh, I, I have about 100 scriptures in this um, and a very short story. And we're going to just flow. Uh, Holy Spirit's going to speak. I believe that God wants to speak to some of you very clearly to create freedom, to bring captives out. Um, how do I know that? Well, I believe that that's what God told me to do, but also the opposition I've had in my own physical body this week. Um, I don't get up here without having significant physical battles the week before. Uh, last night, <clears throat> my knee hurt so bad I could barely bend my leg. My knee was swollen. It was hot. And I believe it was a direct attack against what the Holy Spirit wants to do today. Um, so we're going to just get into it. Uh, <clears throat> we're continuing the series. I want to tell the story of Joseph very briefly. If you want to read the whole thing, it's in Genesis 37 through 50. But the very abbreviated version, Joseph was one of 12 brothers. He was the favorite son of his father, Jacob. His brothers were not happy with that, uh, so they plotted to kill him. They decided that they would rather sell him into slavery. Might as well make some money off of it. They sold him. He's hauled off to Egypt becomes the servant of a man named Potiphar who was an Egyptian official. He's accused falsely by Potiphar's wife of rape. <clears throat> He's thrown in prison. After being there for about two years, he interprets Pharaoh's dream and is promoted, taken out of the prison and put in the palace. He's now the second in command in all of Egypt. The interpretation of the dream was that there's going to be three years of plenty, three years of famine. So some years later, the famine comes. Jacob's, uh, jo Joseph's family is starving where they are. They travel to Egypt, his brothers, to get food. They come before Joseph. They don't recognize him. He gives them food. He sends them on his way. They run out of food again. They come back. He tells who he is. They go get the whole family. They move Jacob, all the sons, about 70 of them, into Egypt to be well taken care of. Short time later, Jacob, Joseph's dad, who was quite elderly at that time, speaks blessing over the sons, finds them all up, and Joseph's sons speaks blessing. What is blessing? It comes from the word Hebrew word Baruch. It means to kneel before and to cause to prosper. It's imparting identity, who am I? And it's imparting destiny, why am I here? So Jacob lines up the boys down the line, speaking, imparting destiny into each of them. <clears throat> Shortly after that, he passes away. And the 12, the 11 brothers come to, J to Joseph and they say, Joseph, before dad died, he gave us a message for you. Now that he's dead, don't hurt us. Um, they're still up to their shenanigans, but they expected that he may retaliate now that dad's dead. And he says in Genesis 50, verse 20, he says, you intended to harm me, but 
God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So what the enemy spoke, what the evil was imparted to him, God takes it and redeems it. But God. And that's going to be where we're going to be working from today is that but God intended it for good. Not just for you, but for many lives, for generations, to start a generational heritage that flows down through the years. But God. So today we're going to look a little bit at <clears throat> blessing times. The Jewish culture is quite different than our American culture today. In the Jewish culture, they have some very specific milestones in a person's life that blessing is spoken. They do have a weekly Shabbat where the family sits together, eats a meal together, and the dad speaks blessing. They speak identity and destiny into the kids, the family, every week. But they have some very specific milestones in life where there is a celebration and there is an impartation of destiny and identity. They speak blessing. Typically, blessing comes from the parents, but it comes from a lot of places. But so does the opposite. We have a culture that speaks to us. It speaks identity and destiny. We have an enemy, Satan, that speaks identity and destiny regularly, very loud, sometimes in our ears, sometimes through other people. Our parents speak identity and destiny, sometimes positive, sometimes very negative. Our teachers speak it. Social media speaks it. When you look at your pitiful life and compare it to the photoshopped images of the best day in your friend's life on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, and you compare the two, it's speaking identity to you. It's shouting quite loudly, you're a loser. Look at my meal. You're a loser. Look at my nails. You're a loser. Look at my life. Look at where I am on vacation. Look at this beautiful sunset that you don't get to enjoy in your basement apartment. It's speaking destiny and identity to us regularly. The media does it all the time. The news speaks it. Inflation shouts it in our ear when we fill up the tank at the pump. It speaks destiny and stuff. And so we want to counter that today with what God says about us. So the first area in a Jewish home where blessing is spoken is at birth in infancy. Child's brought into the world in a Jewish home. Nearly every home is intact. Very rarely is a child born out of wedlock. Their homes are intact. Their families gathered around. There's blessing spoken. Young, ba young males are circumcised on the eighth day. There is a ceremony of blessing where they speak identity into this child. They speak God into the child. They speak a future and life. And it's gathered around. In our culture, not so much. In this congregation and the people watching online, so many of us have come from broken homes. We're perceived as unwanted. We were unexpected. You may have been wanted, but you are a surprise, a tag along. You may have been cast off. You may have an aban been abandoned by a father. He says, I, I, can't, I can't deal with this. I don't want to deal with this child. You may have been abandoned by a mother. You may have been raised in a foster care system or by a grandparent or by other relatives or by the courts, cast off. You may have been labeled illegitimate, labeled unwanted, and declared that type of destiny into your very spirit. But I want to tell you what Joseph said in Genesis 50, 20. This was intended to harm you, but God intends it for good and for a purpose to bless you and many lives after you. So I want to speak the counter 
to that to you. I want you to hear what God's going to say about you as the illegitimate, about you as the unwanted, about you as the abandoned. And what does God say? Our key scripture says, I will be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters. So let's look at what our heavenly father has to say. So I want you to actively participate in this. I want you to position your, your heart and your mind to hear what God says. Position your body if you choose. I'm going to. The word says to Baruch, blessing, to kneel before and to cause to prosper. So I'm going to do that. And I believe that God is going to impart into you destiny and identity. He's going to speak to your spirit, to those broken parts, to the voids, to the chasms that are left from a culture and a family system and a structure that's designed to harm you or unintentionally harms you and speak life. I knew you before you were born. I created you. I planted you in your mother's womb. I know everything about you. I designed every intricate part of you. I know every hair on your head. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground, but what I know it, how much more my prize inheritance, my children, do I watch over them? I know my plans for you, says the Lord. Plans for good, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I speak life, I breathe life into your lungs. It is not a mistaken, unexpected union union of your parents that brought you to life. It's my design that brought you to life. It is my choice, not theirs. You are my chosen. You are my chosen generation. You are a great nation. You are the blessed that I created for my pleasure and for relationship with you. I plan your life. I lay out your steps. I light your path. My word is a lamp to your feet. I direct you as you move. I give you green pastures in which to rest and to eat. I lead you beside still waters for my name's sake. I restore your soul. Everything you put your hand to will prosper. I'll bless you coming in and going out. I declare good things about you. I am your good shepherd. In me, you lack nothing. You are wanted. You are loved. I loved you so much that when relationship was broken, I sent my son to die on a cross to restore relationship with you. I loved you that much. You are my precious child. My favor rests upon you. My joy will be your strength. The abandonment you felt, the labels you've been given are under the blood of my son. And I want you to know I love you that much. No good thing will I withhold. Every good thing that I have is for you. You are an overwhelming conqueror through me. My grace is sufficient for you. Blessings abound. They pursue and overtake you. You cannot outrun my grace. That's my blessing for you as my child, as a child of the Most High God as my son and daughter, my loved and wanted and desired destiny-filled child. I bless you.
the next point in the Jewish life where there's blessing imparted is at puberty, plus or minus, and it's, there's a rite of passage where they do through a celebration a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. The child is promoted to be a man or a woman. They're no longer seen as a child. They get the responsibilities, but the benefits of adulthood. They can read scriptures in the synagogue. They can do the prayers. They can, everything that was denied them as a child now is theirs as they go through this rite of passage. They're surrounded by family. There's blessings spoken over them. There's impartation of destiny and identity into them as a young man or a young woman as they become an adult through this rite of passage. The community gathers around. The rabbis speak life over them. Their family imparts blessing into them. In our culture, not so much. We have some rites of passage, but very few. Very rarely does our family gather around and say, I declare you a man. I declare you a woman. Not only a man or a woman, but who you are and what your potential is and what good things they see on the horizon for you and who you can become and who you are called to be. That's rare. In so many of our homes, there's never a dad or a man that says, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the man you are. I'm proud of who you become. Or a man that hugs his daughter and says, I'm here for you, but you are amazing. You are an incredible work of God. You have unlimited future and destiny. I'm going to support you. I'm going to cheer from here. But you are amazing, my dear daughter. It's so rare. Many of us drift along somewhere toward adulthood like a jellyfish in the sea. Not sure if we're ever going to get there or if we already have and we just didn't know it. So many of our young people are raised by the culture. They're drifting along. You find them in their mid-20s in their mother's basement playing video games because they've never been called to manhood or to adulthood. They've never been declared anything but a child to be coddled and taken care of and babied. And then all of a sudden a switch flips and they've gone from being the child to being a loser who's still on their mother's couch in the basement playing video games. And the culture declares that over them. You're a loser. You've become nothing. You're going nowhere. Get out. And they don't know how to fend for themselves because they've never been taught. They don't know what it's like to be a man because they've never been shown. So many absent fathers. The women have never had a man to adore them as their dad does, speak life into them. So they choose a loser because they don't know anything else. They just want affection. And so many of us here and watching online and in our culture today are missing that. I want to tell you what God says. I want to declare the but God intended for good part. That's the, this was for harm. Let's talk about the but God intended for good. My child, if you follow my words, if you obey my commands, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. I declare good things over you. The benefits I have are incredible. My joy will be your strength. I will shepherd you. I will leave you lacking nothing. My word will lead you. Even my rod of discipline and my staff of correct direction and cor will be a comfort to you. I will lead you where you need to go. My word will light your path. I declare good things over you that will flow from you to the generations that follow. Every covenant I've made, 
Every word I've spoken is yours. I make you the head, not the tail. You are over, not under. You are intended to be on top, not the bottom. I speak life to you. I provide you with my peace. My grace is sufficient for you. I provide you with new mercies every morning. They're there every morning new to counter the fresh stupid that we wake up with. But the mercies are new every morning. For you, my sufficient grace, my peace that passes all understanding guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I will provide for you. I dress even the wildflowers in the hills in majesty and beauty. How much more will I do for you who love me and who I gave my life for? You are my prized possession. I'll cover you with my wings. I'll shelter you as your most high God. I'll give my angels charge over you. They'll keep you and carry you so you don't even trip over a stone and stub your toe. I'll be with you in hard times and good. I am your creator. I am your loving father. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You and your seed will never beg for bread. I'll bless your bread and water. I'll take sickness from your midst. Why? Because I love you. I created you. I gave my son for you. I just want relationship with you. The next stage of blessing in a Jewish home is at marriage. And again, the family gathers around and it's a big celebration. And they speak blessing. They speak life. And they declare a future together. Very few of their marriages break up, very unlike American culture. But they speak blessing into them as a couple. The spouse is accepted into the family from both sides. Both mothers and fathers speak life into that marriage and a future and just generations and generations. And they surround it. The culture comes together to declare identity and destiny. In our culture, sometimes, sort of, if we're fortunate, we'll have a wedding in a, a church where a family gathers around or a small celebration on a beach where the family's together and, and they may even like your spouse, but not always. But then rarely is blessing spoken and destiny imparted into that marriage. Yeah, they give you gifts, send you off on a honeymoon. But the best gift you could get is that they speak life into you. They impart destiny. They speak who you are as a son or daughter of God. Embrace your spouse and love you. Many are married by a justice of the peace in a courthouse. They're not going to speak blessing. The fake Elvis in a chapel in Vegas, he's not going to do it. So many of us have missed that, that impartation of blessing. But God, I want to speak some of the but God statements of blessing that he speaks to you. He says, don't be afraid. I'm with you. 
I will bless you. I will multiply your descendants. Your children and your crops will be blessed. Your offspring will be blessed. I honor you. I anoint your head with oil. Your cup overflows with blessings. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be full and blessed. I give you rest in green meadows. I lead you beside peaceful streams. I anoint your head. I restore your soul. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you'll be blessed. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water. I'll protect you from illness. I'll bless my people in their homes around my holy hill. In the proper season, I will send showers that you need. There'll be showers of blessing. All your needs are met according to my riches in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No voice that rises against you will stand. Every tongue that rises against you, I will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is the declared word of God, the blessing that you inherit as a child of God. All things will work together for your good if you love me, if you're called according to my purpose. These are the words that are declared over each of us as adopted sons and daughters of the Most High God. This is our right. This is our privilege. This is who we are. This is what God wants to say into each of your hearts and souls to counter, to be the but God of what culture says about you, of what your employer says, of what your teacher said when you were young. Hear the but God. Use it to battle. Because culture is going to come back before you get home, probably, and begin to declare the opposite again. The enemy is going to whisper in your ear, probably before you get to the car, something counter or something to distract from. So you take these. I do have handouts in the back that have most of these scriptures on them. Take them. Use them to battle. Fight for your destiny. Fight for your inheritance. Fight for your identity. Fight for real. Fight like you're the third monkey on the ramp to the ark and it's starting to rain. <laughs> Fight for it. Fight for it. Declare the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You aren't going to outsmart it. You aren't going to outthink it. You aren't going to outcalculate it. Yeah. Some of us try. Yeah. We plot and we manipulate and we think and we make all these decisions and we build our spreadsheets and our Gantt charts. You're not going to get there from that. It's by hearing the word of God. Yeah. And the best way to hear it is out of your mouth. Yeah. Say it out loud. Speak it over your family. Speak it over your life. Speak it in counter to the culture. Declare every day, but God intends it for good. Yeah. For me and for my family and my future and the generations to follow. The word declares that heritage can flow to a thousand generations. If you haven't had it in the past, start it now. Don't wait for somebody else. Declare that heritage over your family. Speak it loud and clear. It is your heritage as a child of the Most High God. We don't talk much about it. We think we're forgiven and we're going to go into heaven. And that's what I get from God when I was adopted into his family by the blood of Jesus. But there's so much more. We live victorious here because of that. Sometimes we have to fight for it, but it is our privilege. It is our right. The fourth area of blessing that I want to talk about in a Jewish home is a blessing at old age. The elderly, they're supported. They're kept in the home the family gathers around and speaks blessing and life to them, declares purpose, not just thanking them for providing or thanking them, but, but speak life to them. What does our culture do? 
way too often we send them to a home. We sideline them. We visit occasionally. Sometimes through our own fault and sometimes through no fault of our own, we've caused distance between our children and us. There's nobody there to say, I bless you, Dad. I bless you, Mom. I'm proud of you. Thank you for the heritage you've instilled in me and my family and that's going to affect generations to come. We often don't get that. There's not the family gathering around. Sometimes they're around, but they're so busy and they perceive as uncaring and, and there's no blessing given. We invite them into the house and we feed them Thanksgiving dinner and then we go watch a football game and rub our bellies. When it's a chance to impart blessing, I challenge you to speak life over your parents. Speak life into them. Speak destiny. Bless them. Not just say thank you when they take you out to dinner. Speak life into them. We miss that so often in our culture. Here's the but God. How precious are my thoughts about you. They can't be numbered. My hand will guide you and my strength will support you. I renew your strength. Even when you walk through the valley in the very shadow of death itself, I will be with you and you do not need to fear evil because I'm there. I anoint your head with oil. I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You can sit down at peace and enjoy a meal with the enemy raging around you because I'm there with you. My goodness and my unfailing love will pursue you all the days of your life. And you'll live in the house of the Lord forever. When the days are done, comes the greatest reward. But until then, my goodness and my mercy are there for you. Every day, my goodness and my mercy are there for you. As you wait on the Lord, you'll be, renew your strength You'll mount up on wings as eagles. You'll run and not grow weary. You'll walk and not faint. This is the heritage of my children. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. I will be your refuge. refuge. I will be your fortress. With long life, I will satisfy you and I'll show you my salvation. You are overtaken my blessing. That's your heritage. So there were two men out walking through the woods on a trail. They came to a clearing in the middle, and in the middle was something that looked like a sinkhole. It looked more like a massive well. It just went straight down to the ground. No piles of dirt around it, no caution tape, no fences, nothing. They kind of walk up to the edge, and they look in. And, Man, that's a deep hole. One of them picks up a rock and throws it in, kind of listening to see how long till it hit the bottom. No sound. So he looks around, he finds a bigger rock, and he picks it up, throws it in, staying back a little farther because this hole's deep. Starts counting. One, two, three, four, five. No thud. And that's a hole. Let's throw something bigger in. So the two of them look around. They find a railroad tie over at the edge of the clearing. And they one on each end. They gather it up and they carry it to the hole. And on three. One, two, three. And they throw it in and they start counting. One, two, three. And about three, a goat runs between them and jumps in the hole. They forgot to count. Quit listening for the thud. They said, that, that looked like a goat. Yeah, I think it was a goat. Man, what a crazy, that's crazy. This goat just ran. Why would a goat go in that hole? So they're looking, they hear some noise in the brush, and a man comes out of the brush on the other side of the clearing. He sees them, he says, hey, have you guys seen my goat? Well, yeah, I think so. Uh, some goat just ran right between us and jumped in this hole. The man says, no, that can't be my goat. My goat was tied to a railroad tie. <laughs> so I have a serious question. I have a serious question. 
to what is your identity and your destiny tied? To what is your identity and your destiny tied? Is it to the messages you receive every day from culture? Is it to the stock market? Is it to what your parents said about you as a child or didn't say? Is it to what the nun that slapped your hands with a ruler declared over you when you were errant? Is it what your ex says about you? Is it what your children say about you? Or is it tied to these promises as sons and daughters of the Most High God who declares over you, I will chase you down with blessings. My blessings will pursue and overtake you. If you don't have a relationship with God, if you've never met Jesus as your Savior, I want to introduce you because instantly these blessings that have been declared over you today can be yours. You can instantly be adopted into that family and receive that heritage and start a heritage that goes for generations. It's as simple as acknowledging your sin, accepting Christ's sacrifice for you on the cross, celebrating his resurrection, and just saying, God, forgive me. Make me clean. I want to live for you. So I want to lead you in that. If you have never done that, now's the time. I want to pray with you. Pray with me as we do. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive my sins. I know you're faithful to forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me of every unrighteousness. I repent. I turn my ways. I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. And I thank you for changing my destiny and giving me a new identity today. In Jesus' name. It's as simple as that. If you prayed that, you now have access to every one of these blessings that I've spoken. <clears throat> Let me real quickly read a scripture over you. It's just a closing blessing. This is Psalm 91. It says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. <clears throat> you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near you. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They'll lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You'll tread on the lion and the cobra. You'll trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Those are your blessings, child of God.